Uh, yeah, I'm very grateful to be here today um, to share some uh, thoughts and insights in um, uh, the change we're seeing in our industry. Uh, I think this decade will be <coughs> a defining <coughs> moment for, for uh, the, not only the industry, but we ha also for uh, the planets and its inhabitants. Uh, it's called for action. Uh, I think there's no climate change we're talking about. There is definitely, quoting Greta Thunberg, a climate crisis. Uh, and I will come to that throughout my presentation today. Um, there we go. There's also a lot of things happening, and of course, uh, calling it an apocalypse is quite dramatic, but uh, we thought the image would be nice to show to catch some attention. Um, so, 8,200 stores closing in the US approximately last year, uh, and, and that's happening in a strong economy. Big players in 2016, 2017, which we thought were invincible, like Forever 21, are wiped out. Uh, there's a lot of things happening, and uh, at the same time, when there is um, uh, famine, there is feast. Uh, so there is, uh, for some companies, uh, an opportunity for hyper-growth and growth in this market. Uh, and we're seeing that a lot. We see some companies really, really growing, really, really fast. It. Uh, they're more, mostly of these companies are very attuned to the new demands of the generation set consumer. Uh, and also, many of them are digitally native. That doesn't mean that traditional retail is not uh, growing and could not be growing, uh, because we also have other retailers who are very successful also in this climate and have growth, uh, that have harnessed uh, certain things that sets them apart. And those are the things I'd like to share with you now. So one thing that we didn't have 10 years ago uh, was an ability to really harness uh, what consumer wants. Uh, there is data access out there now, but I mean, there's an overload of data, but lack of insights. So we, um, in the business I've been involved in, have worked really hard to package that intensity of data touch points and simplifying it into data insights for consumers' uh, demand uh, and what they're buying and what they're interested in. Uh, and if you can do that in a simple way, to young people uh, so they can have an actionable insight at the top of their fingertips, mobile, you can actually make more precise decisions on what you're buying. And it's very simple, really, our, in our industry. If you know what to buy, uh, if you know how much to buy, and uh, for when and in what quantity, uh, then, of course, uh, it's easier to be successful. Less markdowns, more first price sales, and more happy consumers. It sounds very easy. And theoretically, it is. Execution of it is a little bit more complex. Uh, another key factor is, of course, to be successful in our industry, and really in any industry, it's understanding about if you know what the consumer wants now, and if you can react to that faster than your competition, well, you will win. It is as simple as that. So, and if you can, on top of what's in demand now, also have good data analytics tool to forecast what will be in trend that is not being presented yet, you're even on top of the curve and you can be a trend and fashion leader. Our industry takes too long time to go from an idea to store. Uh, going from an idea to store and using six months uh, is archaic. It's not a working business model anymore. There's a reason why 8,200 stores were closed in the US. The reason why retailers are struggling in strong economies. I think one of the main components is the inability to go from concept to store faster than the competition. Another part which is, of course, interesting to see in companies, uh, I just a slight correction, I'm not the co-founder of Naked, I'm a small co-owner in Naked. Uh, so I don't get in trouble later. <laughs> um, that's something I learned in that business, but I learned in other e-commerce situations. Of course, digital marketing and influencer marketing, social media marketing, it's a, really a new phenomena, uh, but it's so powerful. I mean, imagine the Financial Times has 1.2 million subscribers. One influencer in the room here today have 3.7 million subscribers slash followers. And it's a more direct communication. It's two-way dialogue, so traditional press and media. Of course, it's a one-way dialogue. This is a two-way dialogue, and it's instant, it's fast, and it's engaging. 
So this is an important factor for retailers uh, and brands to really harness and understand what's not only happening now, but where, is, where are we going on the communication and the ability to engage with social media and influencer. Now I come to my passion, passion part in the industry. I've, I've been setting up my own factories in China for uh, about 25 years ago, uh, and I created three and a half thousand jobs. Uh, uh, and I was pioneering into uh, to China at that stage. Uh, that was my proudest moment in my life. I paid my workers twice as much as the competition, and still I could beat the prices of my competition. It's about innovation, it's about productivity, it's about understanding what it takes to produce well. Because also if you pay workers well and you treat them well, they will stay with you and they will be happy and working in your company. Um, and our planet is really in trouble. We've added over six, almost six billion people in less, than, well, just around 100 years. Can you imagine? We went from two billion to eight billion soon on this planet. And at the same time, our consumption has increased to an astronomical level. And uh, I mean, look at China, the last 20 years, they pulled over 600 million people out of poverty and put them into uh, mass consumers. We don't even know, the scientists they don't even know what this means for the planet. So the action is imminent, we have to act now, and our industry has a great responsibility, and more interesting, a huge opportunity to pursue, uh, both for the right reason, but also for commercial reasons, because the consumer is demanding this of us. They really want solutions. Some sort of, sort of almost catastrophic facts about our industry, 2,700 liters to produce a shirt. It doesn't have to be like that. The innovation is there now to use recycled materials. We can use plastics and pull it out of the oceans and put it back into, melt it into new yarns and make recycled garments. Why do we have to buy new polyester fabrics when we can use recycled polyester fabrics? There is no excuse for that. The technology is here and it's here now, and we as an industry must act and must push this uh, project forward. I tried to do this since I started in this industry. I've been very passionate about it, but it's been very difficult. Uh, there's a lot of investors and, and, and board members who only think about the bottom line. Uh, and fair enough, we have to be profitable to be sustainable. That's I understand. Uh, but the consumer has shifted now. Now it is profitable to be sustainable, and that's fantastic. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, we decided to uh, take matters into our own hands. Uh, and I came together with two amazing people uh, who are not only become my business partners and co-founders of a new business we're soft introducing here today, but I could also call them my friends, and that's Stephanie and Marcus. Hello. Um, thanks for that introduction, Mike. Um, I should probably give just a little bit of a backstory as to why we're on this stage uh, with with Mike, who we didn't really know until about six months ago. Um, so Steffi and I wanted to create our own unisex brand, and we started looking to do this around uh, like a year ago. And just through speaking to my friend Ant, he uh, I used to play football with this guy called Ant. And he was like, right, you guys want to do a sustainable brand, you need to speak to this guy called Mike. So I sat in a coffee shop and I was like, okay, who the hell's Mike? But cool. 15 minutes later, I'm on a phone call with Mike and it was really weird because it felt like it was like some sort of strange first date where I was sort of <laughs> selling myself to Mike and Mike was selling his vision with New In and everything he wanted to achieve. And I suddenly realized that we have a much bigger opportunity to do something really strong other than just our own unisex brand. So the next day, I flew to Berlin to Steffi, and then... And then we had our second <laughs> date, kind of, <laughs> but I was involved. Um, so we had a Skype call for three hours, and Mike shared his vision with us, and I was just mind blown, and I understood that we have such a bigger mission than just creating our own unisex brand. We can actually inspire other brands to move yeah. faster towards sustainability. So, um, it's, yeah. It's actually a bit of a strange moment because like, this is the first time we've been working on this together with some very talented people who are also dotted around this audience and around the world for the last six months. So Newman is uh, it's a sustainable online fashion house. Um, and it, this is the first time we're like putting it out <laughs> to the world just in like a little, so yeah. So, so what we felt about New In is, 
it's time for change. And leveraging our knowledge, uh, my engineering background and manufacturing background, e-commerce and digital background, with Marcus and Stephanie's true, line, true understanding of the digital space and the social space. We came together and we have uh, created a brand uh, that we are very proud of called New N. Uh, is this the first time we've actually talked to about this officially? And it's based on three very simple pillars. Uh, because Marcus uh, made a, um, uh, a little check with his audience on his uh, big audience on, on Instagram in terms about uh, sustainability mm. and what they think about it. And please share that. Yeah, with I, us. I, whilst we started work on this project, I wanted to do a little bit of market research just amongst my own audience. So I asked them the question, uh, two questions I asked them um, Do they know anything about sustainable fashion? And if so, what are their thoughts? And the same two things kept coming back. And those things were uh, they had either heard about sustainability but didn't know what that word meant, and they were confused by it. And the second thing was they either knew what it was, but they couldn't find any options that were affordable. So that okay. kind of brings it into what we're doing, and it made us feel like, right, there really is a huge opportunity here for us to, to come in with new in and create yeah. something amazing. And zero compromise, radical transparency, down not only to the factory where it's been produced, we're proud of the factories we're working with. Their, their workers are treated well and they're healthy uh, and they treat uh, the environment well. They invest in tremendous amount in innovation and about sustainability. These are the type of manufacturers we need to support in the industry. It's not only about looking at an isolated FOB cost. We have to see the total picture. Uh, and that's very important for us. And we thought if we create a fashion first opportunity because when people talk about sustainability, they think, oh, it's a little bit boring and it's not affordable. We are to totally saying, no, that's not right. And hopefully you will, in this audience, agree with us uh, when you see our range coming out in April and when we're launching this hard uh, and a hard launch. Um, and um, I think I want to show also some, some sort of interesting pictures because all the factories we work with, we visit. And uh, we went on a little Portugal tour uh, on the factories together. Yeah. yeah, we went to the factory, and I think as many of you, we didn't know how a garment is being made. Like, we love fashion, and we work in the fashion industry for six years now, but you don't have a clue. So we went to the factory to see where our clothes are being produced, and it was really mind-blown to see how a garment is being made. So we decided to film it all for our IGTV to show our audience what actually means clothing. Right? Mm -hmm. Coming soon. Coming soon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and this is actually a very interesting factory. As you can see, we were wearing jackets. It was not finished yet. Maybe, Mike, you can tell us more about this factory. So this is the exciting part of innovation. So they have invested somewhere around 25 million euros in a per completely vertical factory that can be recycled. So simply put, I can take this garment, throw it into a grinder, and it makes a new and beautiful product. That gives also an opportunity to be even lesser impact. We can actually do a 360, a total cycle back and return. And using recycled fabrics is so high impact because we are basically can take reverse the landfill uh, 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 that's happening, throwing things in the landfill, take plastic out of the oceans and make new garments on it. So people talk a lot about sustainability. It's a very difficult and very wide topic. I want to keep it simple. If you focus on the materials and you focus on recycling in the materials, your impact will be the highest. And on that note, I think we are out of time <laughs> oh, on yeah. 10 seconds. And uh, <laughs> thank you for your attention and uh, being here. And we're grateful to be here. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Uh, maybe we take the time for one question. Is there someone in the audience who wants to ask something? Some, something, someone, now is the chance. No one. Also, maybe I can add, we at the moment have a showroom. Maybe it's fine that I'm mentioning sure, this, sure. right? Yeah. And uh, if someone is interested in seeing clothes, we can arrange a meeting or something like that. That would be nice. Then that was a good uh, goodbye note from your side. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.